So uh, going into game one, Liquid chose first pick, as Kyle mentioned in the previous draft panel. And going into game two, OG had priority and they actually chose second pick themselves. So I feel like if you're Liquid right now, you have to be thinking about this Alchemist simply because what happens if OG pick it again on eight and Liquid's openings aren't prepared for that? They, like, they, there needs to be some respect shown towards the Alchemist. I would like to talk to Kyle real quick because I feel like oh. he was a bit harsh towards Boxy last game. Okay. So okay. I want to present this scenario to you. Okay. Where you have an off, you have a four position Willow against a five position of Bad, and it's like a pretty hard one to one support counter. You're laning against either Monkey King or Alchemist, so Alchemist is really nice against Core Profit. Viper's banned out, and you have to pick an off laner that can survive the lane with a counter support against Monkey King or an absolute last pick that counters you, what do you pick? Venom I feel answer. like Liquid lost the draft before that. Go ahead. Venom answer. Venom answer against a Badden? Yeah. How about Slada? You you don't uh, really play with the Gale too much, or you Gale after shield, and you just hit him with uh, with Ws. But more importantly, it just you, I, I think you just kind of have to pick a ranged offlaner in that spot, uh, because all of the melee ones that can actually contest an MK with so much sustain are already banned out. But what if they were to pick like a like a scary that counters Venomancer in lane, put Monkey King mid, put Alk off lane? Oh, you can always swap the lanes and just put the Venom mid. Does okay, so you just you just think the fact that they the, groomed the wolves. They're, they're yeah. having a nice I think you're, you're, yeah. and it's not really... I, but I think <laughs> just in the meantime, we're having the replay on for last game. I think we want to yeah, have game two for this one, just yeah. uh, for production. Thank you. Uh, uh, no longer rerunning game one. Thank you. I just don't think you can last pick something. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Apparently they're just not listening to you, Brian. I understand. No, funny, okay. Yeah. Um... But yeah, you, I just think going into this draft, it's relevant. That's the only reason I'm talking. We're gonna have like a yeah. mini conversation. We'll what the hell? Yeah, sure. Can you guys sure. stop? Like you can theory craft. Oh, this the over. alchemist is back! Why? Energy. All right. So anyway, yeah, going Jesus. back to it. This doesn't matter, Carl. We got more picks. It's a board. good pick. You better ban the monkey king now, and indeed they do. And this is what I meant when OG our second yeah. pick. You know what I would like to see OG do with oh, their God, just... moment of brilliance? Maybe if it's a good game, suddenly put the alchemist in the carry role. Mm. Don't put right. it in that offlane role. Just change up the script a little bit. But it's gonna be offlane. Oh, um, I, I actually think and this is uh, the OG staple, right? They find something a little busted and then they lean on it. They steal the series with it. Um, why not? Yeah. If it, it, if it wins, you know. Okay, so in that, what, why is it a little bit confusing then that Liquid hasn't really presented their opening to deal with this eighth or this second pick Alchemist then? Because when I see Puck, you don't care, you don't play into Alchemist that well. Voice for it, same thing. But you like to jump heroes and blow them up. You never do that to the Alchemist. Yeah. So I'm already a bit worried that Liquid hasn't really learnt from game one and they're still sticking to like their strategies what they want to play and that doesn't always help when you're playing up against you know kind of new iterations of how heroes are played mm -hmm. they thought that the monkey king was the problem uh brian do you know any other heroes that would be really good with uh, such an early axe uh, other than monkey i am king? gonna say it right now yes. night shocker okay right. oh that, that's not one is there any reasoning like... behind that brian i uh, I think Night Stalker is very good against Puck Void Spirit, and I think his Ag Scepter is only a bad item theoretically because he can't farm it. I just disagree solely based on the fact <laughs> OG's thinking about their own draft. They're trying to get mid one zero mm -hmm. to hyper carry status. They're not picking carry Night Stalker. To like How is that it, not it, a hyper wait, hold carry? On. Do you know how much damage that hero does? <laughs> but what? I thought, you know, heroes that you normally always build an axe on anyway, that you just want to have faster, like Zeus, yeah, you the know? Key, the key thing here is no. the reason why that no. game went so well for OG, they had a carry that with Aghanim's unlocked Roshan pre-15. That Aegis gave no, them it's such It's because it's Monkey King eggs. What? That's the thing, that's what I'm saying, Kyle. We're saying the same thing. It, it, but it to... scales. It increases your farming speed. And eggs yeah. on... Like, think of it like this. Alchemist, he gets more gold out of the map buys this axe, then gets the Monkey King, who now can get more gold out of the map. Like, it unlocks the hero. Night Stalker doesn't get more out of the map than a previous oh Night Stalker? You, you, it <laughs> doesn't, uh, it's doesn't scale exponentially the way damage and right clicks do. Uh, you can you can AoE a Q. That isn't... And that's why, based off of Kyle's logic, of course, the Monkey King, Juggernaut, and Gyro, these are all three heroes that with Agonim exactly. can do those things. So you can't Well, I'm saying those are all going to be banned out. So we're gonna have, if they're going to yeah. leave this as an offlane alpha, we're going to have to right. go to the heroes Brian, that may Brian, be the... Brian, if, they, if they pick Night Stalker, Brian, I will 
legitimately Please. run around the studio. It is no longer okay. snowing. It's not as funny. No, but okay. So I think potentially with this Beastmaster ban, it still might push the Alk into a carry roll. I yeah, think Beastmaster possible. against Alchemist is always one of those awkward matchups where the B could be piercing raw always mm -hmm. hinders you a little bit. So that's why maybe this Alk could be flexing it, carry, like I said earlier. No, I agree. It's possible. They, they could just Death go Prophet. like Oracle type that's, save here on, on the next pick with the Death Prophet Alk. That was a hero I expected to see Liquid. That's another thing, by the way, I think Liquid could have picked for boxing in the offlane in the previous game. Um, just something that deals with Alk and is in general just a solid hero pickup. I think that the carry Alk could be possible. You bring out the Ags later, but it's a really nice item just to throw on a death Key prop. thing is, for carry Alk, Ags is not even kind of in question. But it know? could be. Yeah, sure, eventually, you know, after like seven items that you farmed yeah. in 25 minutes and you're already, you know... Well, AA, AA, AA is insane value right now. I'm not oh, sure yeah. if you can get away with it, but this is a, a dream Ancient Apparition game for Liquid. And I think that the hero nurse not being thought of as good is part of the reason DP and Alk are becoming visible, because there's just too much sustain represented. Even if the if the, the DP is five and the Alk is three, like, is there still enough value for an AA? That, that, the position. That's probably why they don't want to instantly lock it in now because of yeah. the flexibility of the hero is suddenly going from cores into oh wait, they're now suddenly in that kind of supporting cast yeah. on an off yeah. roll. That's why it's so tricky with this with this alchemist pick, because again, you're activating the carry. He could still be the one position you would really want that AA. But if you pick it too early, you just say, okay, well, you've lost the game now because this hero will just be 5k net worth and we're gonna beat you with this just liquid non regen base. The key thing here is liquid has to be so careful with what they pick. Because this next pick from Oji most likely is going to be Topson's hero, just so that kind of flexibility of DP Alk is unfolded in that last pick. And that's why if they pick a squishy hero, suddenly you're running into like a Topson Tiny. If you pick a hero with no lockdown, you're going to have like an Ember or another spirit coming into play. Ooh. I dig that, but into Rubik, my dad would be very upset. <laughs> Big spell, still big spell. Use big spell. He, his Looks only. Good on the tally. <laughs> I think Saxa is happy though. His, his drafting tips almost always revolved around can I any mage and yeah. ban Rubik if you're gonna pick Enigma. My dad, <laughs> like so ah. When I was coaching Chaos, it was always we hard played Timbersaw, and my dad would text me like, pick the guy that kills trees. We's really good at that one. <laughs> and we're like playing up against like Vichy Gaming, best of one lower bracket. We're like, eh, I don't think we can. <laughs> Yeah, point, point being that, you know, Liquid obviously very comfortable with the hero. I think it is excellent, but you just won't really be able to play around the black hole. It could also just be an Insania hero, which I would really like, I think. But do you? No, not but, really into Alchemist, actually. The, okay, the key thing here is, think about how OG played that first game. They had the strong lanes, they collapsed them up quickly at minute 15 with their Ags being transitioned over. Of course, maybe the Alks carry, but still, it's that pressure they apply. They have flexibility in all three oh. heroes now. And for me, my only fear for Liquid is, their draft is so like stagnant in the idea that they kind of they play their lanes very generically. They're not making these quick moves, Void and Puck can, but they're Void and Puck who are running into a DP, a DK, and Elk. You don't kill these heroes. Yeah, Maybe I, if you I, outnumber I, them, but I really hope it's not. I'm a, a bit worried. Puck. I'm agreeing. Brian, I see a problem uh, with lack of damage coming out for Team Liquid. Maybe How are they going to solve Timber it? Timber could be the saving grace. Sorry. I'm honestly not really sure because they have to the lane. I know, but I thought Timber would be good. I want to say it quickly. Rob, wow. son. Come Sorry, on, Brian, uh, go ahead. Yeah, you know, you're fine. The last game they had Nature's Prophet against Alk, and this game they just picked Enigma and Alk. It's like the same idea. You have summons that are squishy to physical damage. And so not only, like, like you said, they do have to check this box of bringing down these tanky cores, but then I think they might just have this issue again where Alk's going to have all the space in the world to either farm his Ags as an offlaner or hit this ridiculous timing as a carry. They can flex it since they have absolute last pick. They can put it in whatever side lane. Timbersaw is a great answer in regards to the pressure that they need to apply in the early game. And I think this is a stark contrast to last game in terms of their approach. They went with the tower pressure approach of the Lone Druid, but he doesn't lane well against Alk. Mm. You saw they kind of skipped that portion of the game. So I, I like this pick a lot better. And now they just need to have like a superior win condition because Timbersaw, he basically makes space for like 15 minutes and that hero kind of sucks afterwards. So they're gonna have to make a hero that really capitalizes on that first. Yeah. Early it, could, it could also it could be safe lane. It could be it could be anybody's hero on on liquid. So it's quite nice. Uh, can have some troubles with core death profit, sure, but really great matchups against the Alk and the DK. But it just it works, and this is this is just much more of a boxy hero. I hope I hope he's playing it. I'd love liquid to round out their draft with like a razor or just something fully into Ew. the fight. Just just just. Hear it out, right? So right now, look at Liquid's heroes. You know, they're not really lane dominated. So they're going to be lane dominated, sorry, with the Timbersaw that offsets the timing of OG. It's not as comfortable as before. 
but I want them to be able to like double down on that aggression. We've seen how flexible they are with voice spirit and what lane it plays, and just really collapse the map. But again, it really depends on where OG's putting this Alk and DK, because of course, if DK's now your, you know, your mid, Alk's your carry, they pick an off lane. It's so hard for Liquid to pick with confidence. And you talk about a win condition, but I don't see how they secure the win conditions farm because it's only Timber who's got like the best game right now. Everyone else is kind of awkward. So picking a strong yep. win condition, you can't cover his farm. So you need a hero that's strong enough by himself to be able to take the fight with his team and play off of that timing, try and collapse the map. There is no patience or no hesitation for OG for for their bans, by the way. And uh, we see uh, Insania in a conversation with Koifak because the decision oh. has not yet been made, I would imagine, to happy. who's playing what. Well, they lost the game. They're I know. Back. But I mean, yeah, but look, they look the like Avengers they're pushed lost. in the corner. Look, there was a pit, like, just at the first draft. He was so bubbly and happy. He was so happy, happy like, Jab smiling uh, in the background. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> two for two, baby! Rob, our goal is to try and explain why heroes are I just did. He did! Before did. it was picked, Kyle! <laughs> and also, the other thing as well, my dear, about the Razor is uh, we saw in the lower division how uh, no Bounty Hunter, when they were playing into a Death Prophet, potentially if it was core, he went for yeah. BKB Blade Mail, you just soak up the damage. So no, I like the fact that Liquid did double down on that. And uh, yeah, it's really no, right. leaning into it. Thank you, Kyle. Really good job. What do you what do you reckon of uh, the? Ooh, okay, bro, you, you got you got to go first of this. Uh, Arc what does Warden. Arc Warden's Ags even do now? I need to look this it up. It makes the wraith bounce. You know, it makes it a second spark. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it's not like an acceleration item like we saw last game with the Monkey King. The, the force uh, evolution. I I think Team Liquid's last two picks really sealed their draft here. Like it just okay. finished all the. It filled in all the boxes. They have the early pressure. They have the damage later with the Razor. Razor punishes these super tanky heroes because even though his initial burst damage isn't that great, it's like it doesn't help you to survive an extra 10 seconds if you do zero damage and he's suddenly hitting for 400. So I, I think Liquid's going to have all the pace they need. They have the late game condition for the Enigma. Taiga has shown that he can absolutely carry these games. I think they're all on their comfort zone heroes. They rotated a puck to support, just like Kyle said. I like their draft a lot. I think Liquid's got this game. Yep. All right, thank you very I, much, Brian. I agree. I'm questioning, though, what will the Alk Ags on DK do because it doesn't take you right to Black Dragon, right? That would no, be yeah, you the fourth be, level. Exactly. So in theory, you could do something weird. Maybe you get twelve fat, like you get the Red Dragon faster, a Frost Dragon faster. Like, does that affect your ability to take stacks or something? Like, how how strong will a level 15, 16 minute Frost Dragon be for mid one? It, I'm trying to think about maybe if they just look towards maybe giving like the Rubik or like they activate the support in a different way. But again, it's more, I think it's just a drafting thing at this point. You're not leaning on the Ags now, it's just more, okay, we have the heroes, if we want to go back, we can, but you know, it's a, yeah. it's a refreshing game. I, you can uh, give Rubik the Ags, and then he's gonna steal Black Hole, and, you know. Yeah. Like, You're gonna uh, be able to steal, hey, Saxa I mean, will steal it. I gotta say, I mean, Robson's the last two picks, like they're, they're, they're true. Maybe, yeah, this is, this well, is why we bring a coach on panel. Liquid's got this, yeah. they have two coaches, and we got one I here. I think everybody wants Liquid to got this because that means we will get a third game to the series because they are one game down at the moment. What will happen in game two? We're gonna find out together with Moxie and Purge. Well, it seems like OG is doing Alchemist 2 Electric Boogaloo here, but I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough, Purge, because everyone seems very excited to see that Razor on panel. Yeah, uh, we'll see if the sequel is as good as the first uh, video. Oh, it almost never is, uh, this first movie. <laughs> That's but, not uh, true. There are some films where the second movie is even better. That's true. Terminator is probably the big one, right? Uh, that and Star Wars. Hello? Empire Strikes Back? That's so true. That's true. Yeah. But we'll see how it works. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the eggs, feeding an eggs to Dragonite is kind of cool. It gives them a lot of magic resistance. That part is really, really uh, excellent. Um, and then uh, free pathing, that's kind of nice too. And obviously levels up is his ulti, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with the panel. Maybe Seb goes for a faster blink dagger, tries to get active, then gives Ags later on. That could be an option. Um, or they try to make um, the Ags uh, Arc Warden be really effective too. It could give them a lot of map control if they just spam spark rates around a tower. Well, Boxy is gonna get caught here by the side of OG, but again, he is a timber saw. He hasn't opted to scale anything just yet either, so. Mid one will start off with that dragon tail. Mm -hmm. He's going to safe lane, so Ooh. this is not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ooh, we're in fine form coming out here from Liquid. To be fair, was, OG uh, will usually do the same thing right back. Usually, so it was uh, it was incredible how well timed that was. It was like they counted it down. They're like, okay, guys, we got to tip him at the same exact moment. Boom, four hits him. Yeah, it's all about that mental warfare here, you know. OG, they're kings of that. 
These are the guys that go in and they're just having fun. They're laughing. You saw the way Mid One giggled when they saw that Arc Warden getting picked up. <laughs> you gotta true. have a strong mental game too, Purge. I expect to see that in your coaching from now on too. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do have the Arc Warden here. He's gonna be duking it out with Mickey and uh, have a nice stat over there. Overwhelmingly picked on Radiant 14 times, 9 and 9 in DPC, but uh, not ever picked up here in EU just yet. Yeah, uh, we'll see if it ends up working out. Uh, lanes are going to be a bit weird with a Dragonite against Razor, which should be pretty good for Razor since he's a melee hero that you can sap damage from. Uh, Puck versus Death Prophet will be fine. No Tail not willing to trade right now, running for his life here, which is a little surprising because he's actually a way more region than his opponent does, but um, not quite ready to fight yet. Well, he's out of the Spirit Siphon from Tardis too, so. That's and then uh, Taiga jungling too. I feel like a, Dragonite. a lot of uh, a lot of the pressure is is on you know this Arc Warden to have all that damage, right? Because you're gonna have some tanky boys coming out from the side of OG, but you know Dragonite not really known for being able to uh, you know dish out that damage. Good point. Yeah, Dragonite's damage is uh, oftentimes he's more about initiating more so than uh, dealing DPS. Um, they've got some. Upsides, I guess. I mean, Acid Spray is still going to amplify whatever damage you're dealing. Death Prophet support often does way more damage than a typical five position hero does if you keep her alive with exorcism going. So there's there's some some damage methods that should be effective. Now, but we're already seeing, you know, that advantage that a Razor can have against a DK. So he takes a decent chunk of that damage away from him. He's going to have an easier time going for these hits here. It's kind of cool having the uh, the timber saw against the elk lane. Like uh, BSJ pointed out in the last game, you acid spray creep waves, and then they can't fight you in that. But timber can because he has an abnormally high amount of armor from reactive armor, so he doesn't care as much to deal with this. And having timber against all these melee cores is going to be excellent for Boxy. This is definitely one of his better heroes, so I'm sure he's going to be able to have a, a good game here, doing the typical Orb of Venom rundown on heroes that Cut. can't trade with you. He's doing a great job in this lane. He's just chasing down Soxa here. He's under attack. Definitely, uh, definitely a threat in this lane for sure. Topson we already saw mid. that. Topson getting ganked here by Tiger. The Aether Remnant drags him back in, and that's going to be our first blood going over to Mickey. And quite falls to Killing Oakdale. No so, looked like uh, Topson got uh, a little aggressive on the opposite side of the map, but uh, Tiger moved over, got a disable off, and therefore they got the easy run down. Um, Arc Warden's a really slow hero. Uh, I think he's like 285. Yeah, 285 without boots. Mm -hmm. So, if you do get out of position, you've got a long chase. I do like the way that the Enigma's kind of bouncing around these two lanes and making sure that, you know, he can respond if yeah. they get a little bit too overzealous, which is something that, you know, OG does like to be very aggressive. We talked about this in the uh, the first game. I do like to be aggressive, yeah. So moving around can definitely help uh, win these lanes, potentially. But two kills right now for Team Liquid, they're pretty happy with their game position, especially um, if they can limit a little bit um, the the overall farm of their opponents. Seb looking like he feels like he has to go leave the lane. He's prepping to stack a jungle camp. We'll see if he gets a double stack here. Probably going to do an attack and then an acid spray to stack the other one. I guess here, but Taiga oh. moving over. He's not going to block it in time. I'm going to stack and try to farm it. So this is where things get iffy for, for offline elf, 100%. Uh, we saw when 3 3 played it, AFK jungling was still pretty quick. Um, especially when you get Grievous Greed and skip Unstable Concoction and getting a Mud Golem camp is excellent too. It's a lot of summons, but you know, this it, he's not going to get the ags nearly as fast as game, most likely, mm -hmm. with this uh, lane setup. Is that going to end? I mean, we've talked about this before the fact that you know, in game number one, mid one won the lane handedly, and then also, you know, the alchemist had a great time. Is that going to automatically set them off as a detriment? It absolutely should, yeah, because the ags are going to come later. Uh, look at the other lanes, Topson got killed mid. Um, his net worth, or his last hits are still good. He's sitting at 24, and he's going to go Midas still fine. But, Radiant I mean, look, Koikva's just down straight in the top lane. He's just killed, chasing uh, down No-Tail. Twice now. Exactly. Like, he's got boots already. His, he basically knows that he can win this lane. Mid one can't outfrass him because it's a Dragonite. So, like, having Razor in this circumstance, they, they just pick basically two side lane cores that are just really good at fighting. And the dive on here in the bottom lane for Soxa. No-Tail is going to join in. Boxy does have those uh, mangoes if necessary. He's going to timber chain. He's still chasing after Soxa here. He's going deep oh, into dinner. these woods. This is not looking super great here for Soxa. As Boxy just slowly just 
A rusty saw to the face. Not the way you want to go down as Mickey and Insania over in the mid lane trying to make the plays on tops and trying to get this kill. Are they going to be able to do it? Yes, they are. As Mickey gets the final hit. See, guys, offlane Alchemist is terrible, clearly. <laughs> and that is why they're losing now. But basically, Liquid just identified. They, they said, like, they're going to try to do the same craft dose again, and then they just picked the right heroes for it. They got two sideline cores that win their matchups pretty convincingly. They happen to get them in matchups that are very good. Having Timbersaw versus Alk is perfect. Having Razor versus an offlane DK is perfect. And they happen to kill Tops in the mid lane now twice. They, they're winning three lanes. This is, like, a massive advantage for Liquid. Koif is just really enjoying sapping all of that damage there from mid one. Just chases him down. Looks like they're trying to make some plays over here on Mickey, but you know, uh, what are you going to do with a Death Prophet 5? You've got some nice silence, yes, yeah. but it's, it's a lot more difficult, right, than compared to what they have going on on the side of Liquid. It is, and he's struggling for, for gold and levels because of the fact that he's died twice in lane now. Just picking up a magic stick and a raindrop, it'll help him survive burst, but having a boots at this position would feel a lot better. But either way, Void Spirit hitting six, like, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to kill him. The best thing you can do now is just sit behind him and, and be ready for the dive when it comes, because Mickey is definitely thinking about it with that DD. <laughs> you can see the way that the sports are playing. They do spot out uh, Taiga, though, over here, so we'll be able to force him out of the jungle. But the tower goes down. Boxy taking it around uh, a little bit before seven minutes. So it's very... Not, not even, he's not even sacrificing himself much here. He will get gone on. Well, it's a long chase. He's got boots. His opponents are half, Ooh. half booted here. Oh, Boxy chasing after Saxa again. He has just been bullying this poor Rubik on and off, nonstop. Down he goes. Although it does look like they're trying to make some plays. Mickey, though, with the double damage, he's sitting very low. Has to be careful. He's taking a lot. Not quite going to be enough. That Crypt Swarm not strong enough either. As Mickey, 70 something hit points. Going to be able to walk away. The Chakram is doing a lot of damage. Mickey, he's just tossing back and forth within here. Is he finally going to get punished? Oh no, God. he's not. No tail now. Looking like he's going to be in trouble. Set next to fall. If they get one more hit off, and by God, they will. Not looking good for OG, guys. Uh, that's a big loss of heroes here. They almost got Mickey, but he just min-maxes it there. It's alive. I'm sure any Liquid fan is really excited right now. That is so big. Look here it is this. again. Mickey in trouble, not looking so good. Gets the double jump, all three tops, and Nisania blocks him about three times in a row. Really nice move there by Liquid to throw the game briefly, but it couldn't stop him. Mickey gets a ton of shield right there, and No-Tail only having level one nuke really costing him there. If No-Tail's level four, 100% he dies. I think he went down to 42 hit points during that whole thing and still was able to walk away. That almost looked like it's just gonna yawn. <laughs> yeah. I will say, oh. Yeah, Boxy is just a big threat right now. There's not a whole heck of a lot that they really can do against the Timber with their lineup at this time. He's, he's such a good player playing from ahead. Like, it's one of his greatest strengths, I think, as an offlane player, mm -hmm. is that if he does get these, like, hero matchup advantages, he knows where to go. He knows how to be aggressive. Like, just getting Thompson's HP to half is massive because now Thompson is not going to want to play aggressive anytime soon here. And he's also shifted from the lane that was easy to kill, the safe lane tower, and he instantly goes mid. And basically, his whole team can ignore him, knowing that he's ahead, knowing that he can also pressure heroes. Instead, he's now going to rotate top, because that's where OG's pressuring. He yeah. just wants to go everywhere. That's going to make it inconvenient for OG to play Dota. Spirit's live and coming out from No Tail. Insania standing nearby. No six yet. No Tail. Looks like he's going to fall. He's free dense a decent amount, but... And over on the bottom lane, Sox is just getting chased by Mickey this entire time. They're just rotating just dancing all the back Okay, maybe they, they get a kill on Taiga. They do. Taiga's super farm, though. He's already got Necro 1, and he's a four-position hero, by the way. He's been jungling. His net worth is slightly higher than Arc Wardens. It's almost the same as Dragonite's. And everybody else on Liquid side is massively ahead. So this is still looking excellent for Liquid. Oh, They're stab. basically just... Oh. Okay, they don't have anything to interrupt that TP, so he's going to be able to teleport out, no problem, but definitely got very low with Boxy, just yo-yoing of death back and forth there. Bottle refill, I, I pressure in two they'll lengths. Commit, they'll commit to this tower now, I assume. They've got Necro 1 in uh, about 17 seconds here, mm -hmm. and they've got smokes ready on Enigma too. They could try to smoke around, but they're just going to play it safe. They don't need to, like, smoke and hard commit for these engagements. They catch the Observer Ward there. That's huge gonna make it even harder for OG to defend because they're not gonna necessarily know exactly where Liquid's heroes are. 
So for now, Boxy does it solo. Quakefoot going to retreat from top. And Sox is still trying to catch up in net worth on the bot lane. Insania will get six here as well. So just really easy pressure mid. No tell might die in the mid lane. Looking dead. Yeah, he's getting chased here by Boxy. Just a couple of clicks. And eventually down goes no tail. The loose tops into the top lane though, but oh, the black hole coming in from Taiga Koifa. Gonna be able to just kite them left and right. They get the kill on step. Mid one is left all alone. They have the double damage on Mikke. It's gonna be Taiga who cleans up. A disaster for OG. The Bottom lane, from Liquid. they're gonna oh go right God. after Sox. He just wanted levels, guys. No, it's a double, or sorry, a triple kill for Mikke. The, the amount of map control and like efficiency they're getting on the map is insane. Taiga TP'd mid, he summoned uh, his Eidolons, he spawned his Necro, and they destroyed mid while Timber is killing the support that tries to defend it. And in the meantime, I'm like, oh, the tower's dead. Then I look top, boom, black hole. So he puts all of his summons mid. He doesn't even need to be top to participate in that fight. And they're, they're just consistently winning all lanes. This is like the most winning three lanes crap I've seen <laughs> and maybe all DPC because it's not like they just won the laning stage. Just like they are constantly winning three oh, lanes, top. no matter where they go. Right into Boxy, right into Taiga. Mickey's coming in hot with that Aether Remnant and Boxy gets himself yet another kill. You are indeed dead. And Koifa's just... just up his eggs. Koifa has not left his lane, I'm pretty sure. He's just been allowed to do pretty much anything. He did, okay, he did rotate once at one point. But look at these TPs coming out immediately. Koifa, he's so fast. Insania, waning Rift coming forward here. Doesn't have the Dream Coil for another 12 seconds. Taiga getting into position, does not have Black Hole, but of course will go drop that Midnight Pulse. Does a decent amount of damage. Is now Seb, isolated from the rest of his team. Koifa's just dancing around here. He's walking his Alchemist over here, and he's going to be able to... No, he does get stunned up. One more hit will do the trick, and down goes Seb. It's not looking great for mid one either, as he's just getting plinked away by Puck. Okay. Socks over in the uh, corner. They're just getting steamrolled here. Guys, Puck is a higher level than Dragonite is right now. That's a five position support. This is not good. The step in is the going down. He did get his Midas off, though. You know, efficiency. Good, good for him. And then he Midas Razor by dying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Mickey is on the hunt, and they will not only take down the Tempest Double up top, but they'll take down the original copy. And this one, his hand Midas is not on cooldown. Passive I think Midas this, feels bad, man. I think the strategy is it really effectively dismantled this game. Like, uh, I think what was kind of crucial about OG last game was that Monkey King as an eggs pickup really effective right but monkey king also is a lane winner right and that's what's crucial here their 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 ags potential heroes here are not like crazy lane winners and they're not as flexible as a monkey king is so og just had the better draft for the strategy in game one game two heavily punished by liquid's reaction picks oh dear Soxa already just gets drawn right back in they'll go to use the exorcism but they're just not doing much damage over here as boxy of course can just go timber chain away the ghosts are doing a decent amount though are they finally going to be able to take down boxy yes they do We'll go back in again. Koifa dancing around. No tail still chasing after Dream Coil coming up over onto the back line. So they go, they take down mid one. And now No Tail trying to just get as much damage with these ghostly ladies as possible. So he doesn't do it down, but he does fall. And now Seb getting chased behind the tier two. The GG gets called. OG, they've had enough. As Liquid figures yeah. it out, Mickey gets a rampage. And uh, this is, you know, one of the strengths of Liquid, I feel, is that they're very quick on the uptake purge. Really, they they equalized it out. They made the they made the strat look bad, and that is that is the weakness of offlane alc right there. If you cannot win your lane and your opponent's pressure remotely effectively, it looks real weak because you are a vulnerability. Their opponents pick strong laning heroes. They happen to win all three lanes, so it looked worse than it generally is. But uh, absolutely commanding dismantling, and and the fact that they were able to do this in game two, they identified this strat, they instantly dealt with it, and to be able to be able to pivot into that in the middle of the series, I think is really commendable, and they just looked like an incredible team here. So I cannot wait to see what happens game three draft. I'm very excited about that too, especially you know we do have the major coming up as well, but uh, you know OG, they're a very very powerful team, one of the few teams that actually set the meta. But Liquid, you know that's one of the things that they do really well is they figure out what went wrong in game one and they adjust. So we are indeed going to be going to a game three, but uh, we are going to toss it over to panel because I think there is a very happy T Gov that probably.